best one ever. <laughs> about Wolverine, okay? That's it. <laughs> wow, that's like the biggest applause ever in the history of a comic book syndicate. So what are you doing? Okay, uh, actually, no, uh, we have our guest today is uh, Julie Sando. She's in the back. <laughs> Julie Sando, come on down! <laughs> the only contestant. Yes. What? Sorry. Anybody? So, Julie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where you is, where you from, what you're doing. All right, all right. I'm a photographer. I'm an artist. I teach at the School of Visual Arts, and I teach design and visual culture. At yeah. what school is that? The University of Windsor. Very nice. Um, a friend of mine wanted me to ask you. He's he's not here right now, but like, what high school did you go to? <laughs> I mean, sorry. Oh yeah, it's Answer a local the show, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm a local girl. I went to Massey. Okay. Mm. I think it shows. I yeah. don't know. Does there, it show? No. There was a. Uh, he's, he's saying no. <laughs> there was no. a lot of soft okay. drugs at that school, weren't there? There was a lot of drugs. At that well, school. you know what? Let's not get into drugs and stuff like that because it's a local show. It's a community the show. Watching. Bring us into the comic then. Sure. Uh, we're going to review Wolverine: The Brotherhood, which this is one of the original, actual. I guess they call them floppies. Uh, this floppies, is, eh? Yep, floppies. For the uh, computer. Exactly. exactly. Wolverine the Brotherhood, uh, reprinted from Wolverine, Volume 3, Numbers 1 to 6, written by Greg Rucka, drawn by Derek Robinson. Robinson. Uh, so, anyway, this is the first of, I think, three trade paperbacks written by Greg Rucka. Um, so, I gave this to Julie because you said that you... Well, not having known anything about X-Men beforehand, I had asked you to give me something to review um, that wasn't a, a typical hero story doing something heroic. Um, I was really pleased that he's uh, rather unpredictable and uh, he's kind of a complex character. Um, I learned really quickly that he is a mutant and he relies on his senses. And I like the way the story and the, the images told me that. There, were, there was a, a nice panel where there was close-ups of his eyes, his nose, his lips. and. Um, it told me everything I needed to know visually, which I really quite liked. We're dealing with a really good artist too. This artist has worked with, and, and in doing this Wolverine story, and, and only sort of comic nerds will know this, but this artist did uh, Transmetropolitan. He's now working on The Boys right now. He's done a lot of work with, you know, Garth Ennis, and he wrote his own stories as well. So this person has like a nice understanding of what it is to tell that visual story mm -hmm. with the comic book medium. And I'm just, I'm just glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> also, you know, well, what, did it make it easier? Obviously, well, you've already explained that it, it has in a way. When the art is good, when the art in a comic book is good, it makes it a lot easier to read. Rather than yeah. the people that, I mean, they produce a great story, but the art's not so hot. There and were a few frames or, or panels, I guess, that actually made me like stop the page flipping and, and study the frame. There was one. Uh, not in this particular book, but in another where there's a female character who gets maced in the face. Okay. And then there's a, a side profile of her with like this chemical oozing off her face. And it was like disgusting and beautiful and everything you would ever want in a picture. Now, mm. as an art teacher, when you're, when you're reading the book, when you're, or when you're reading any of these comic books, were you looking at like... And no, composition, like, like comp exactly. Were you looking at it be, saying? I just want to be entertained as well. I mean, if you can get a good story and that can hook you, and the images tell you additional information, I mean, it's pretty seductive. Are you also aware that he's a, he's a Canuck? I knew that. Like he's he's mm -hmm. Canadian boy, which is always what's. We don't know if, if it's official though, no, right? It but it's, 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 it's official. Be. We've gone through the entire story now. We I don't just know. I was there. And in Windsor, he was actually, he's in Windsor. He's here right now. And most of the Wolverines in the, in the world are in Canada. Yeah, most of them. Yes. Oh, that's exactly. Yeah. I think that's an actual, let's check that on Statistics Canada. I did check. Well, <laughs> it is, actually it is. It's right here. Uh, this is, a, uh, when this was out, this, when this writer was doing Wolverine, this was actually selling well in men's stores, which I don't even know, I don't know what a man's store is. Like maybe they sell guns and testicles yes, or something. baseball bats. I don't know. But um, yes. the thing is, is this is exactly the kind of thing that I can hand to anybody and they would like it. 
and it reminds me of like I don't know the old Kung Fu or the Hulk show where you have a you have a, you have one guy with a little bit of a uh, little bit of fantastic uh, element to his to his persona. He's got the claws. He's got the senses. And at the beginning of the story, he sort of comes in, meets this girl, and it goes from there. Oh, but there's no X Men. There's no costume. There's no mask. It's just this guy with the claws. Well, no, it's not even the guy with the claws. The whole story starts off with a guy with a book in a diner, yes, he and he's yes. reading, he and he's a reader. And it's that kind of brilliant sort of idea of like, look how sensitive that reader is, you know? But he's big, and he's brawny, but he's short, and he's stocky, and he's, you know, you get this whole thing from it. And He's a beast, only, and he's an intellectual. And, and the story leads on to him being a detective, you know, as he solves this problem and, and finds the killer. And I love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I would recommend it. Would you recommend it? I would. That's great to know. For me, it's George. I'm not a hooker. <laughs> We're not convinced on that yet. No, we actually have someone saying yes that you are a hooker. Actually, in the back, and they have a five dollar bill. So it, that actually could be. Okay, let's go to break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit about Wonder Woman, and uh, I think Linda Carter. I read that in the. Uh, yeah. Really. Oh, wow. Want to touch the hiney? Okay, no, <laughs> come right back and we'll talk about some Wonder Woman. Yes, Linda Carter. Hi heroes, Mike Gell here. I'm here to tell you my five favorite comics of all time. Number five is The Fantastic Four by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Number four is Superman from the 1960s by Otto Binder, Ed Hamilton, uh, drawn by Kurt Swan. Number three is The Girlfriend Trilogy by Jeffrey Brown. Number two comic of all time is Animal Man by Grant Morrison and Chaz Truog. And my number one recommended comic of all time is, no surprise, Watchmen by Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons. You can order these comics anywhere, so please do so. Uh, what's your name? Andrew Blondin. And what do you do? I draw. What's your favorite title right now? The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller. The original from 1986, right? Uh, yes. Okay. And what do you like about Dark Knight? I totally love the art. I like how, like, I like how, um, just, uh, varied it is. Like, one, one time his, like, this guy's face could be looking like this, and in another panel it'll look completely different because of, like, the lighting and something else. Like, um... It's like, it's inconsistent, and I, that's what I like about it.